Hello, everyone. D. Alfred Ostrowski, Theory of Computation. This is lecture nine. In this recording, I'm going to be going through an example of context sensitive grammars. And I'm going to be covering the duplicate word problem. I have a word followed by the same word, WW, where W exists as any combination of A's or B's. So let's get started. So in review somewhat, what's the difference between a context sensitive grammar and what we know to be as a context free grammar? Context free grammar above the font here. A context-free grammar has a single non-terminal at the left-hand side of the operator. And in comparison, a context-sensitive grammar is unrestricted. I can have non-terminals, any number on the left-hand side as well as terminals on the left-hand side. So this gives us a lot of power and this enables us to solve the problem. So our classical context free grammars would include A and B N. I could solve this problem with the context free grammar. If I add a C of N, then I have your classical context sensitive grammar. I can pump out a language with the double pumping lemma. That's another discussion. If I have a word of sufficient length, I can set it up a word example relative to M that no one can pump two points out. Why? Because I have a lot more complexity here. I need a lot more memory to, to work with. Now let's consider a different example. And that is of the, for lack of better description, repeating word problem, two words uh, of which the word exists as any combination of A's or B's, okay. And let's work with an example. Now you wanna be careful, right? That you can use any number of examples and that it, fits your needs, right? You want to make sure that you have an example that's gonna cover all the different types of scenarios and that you're not describing words that don't exist in your language. So especially with the grammars that become as, can be as complicated as this. But let's just take a simple example to work with ABB and then that would be followed with another ABB, okay? The ABB be the word, and then the duplicate word again would be existing as described. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing my grammar as we go and do a derivation of this word example and describe the mechanics and the key points of the transitions. So let's get started here. I'm gonna take my starting point and I would say A S non-terminal A and B S non-terminal B. Let me put in a lambda so I can cancel that S out. Then I'm gonna be left with non-terminal A's and B's and the terminal A's and B's. So I can do a derivation to solve this word, this uh, example to solve this one word, but I'm going to keep in mind all the other variations that exist in my design, right? So I can say S and I can do the derivation very easily. I can go ASA, right? As described, I can take the S and go to the transition to the B, kind of following through my example here. I can say A, B, S, non-terminal, and of course the non-terminal A, and I can do it one more time. That's gonna give me the initial word description, right? 
And of course, the S is going to go to the lambda. And the B is going to be inside. But we see what's going on here. I have an ABB and then non-terminal B, non-terminal B, and non-terminal A. Uh, so it's looking like the palindrome problem. So we have to, now we have to make a uh, um, design decision with our unrestricted grammar power to be able to accept this grammar. So let's create a little workspace on the lower right hand side of the screen and see where we're going with this. So I would have A, B, B, and then B, B, A. So I gotta do one of two things, right? I have to, I have to shift, I have to invert this word because I gotta match the words as two equal words as W, W, not W, W reverse, okay? Which would not be context sensitive, right? So now, I might be inclined starting from the right and inverting backward, but I don't have an anchor point, okay? I don't have a point of reference to tell me that that's the absolute last letter, doesn't know that in the grammar. So what I'm, what I'm going to need to consider is the fact of whether it's an A or a B, where I make that transition between a terminal to a non-terminal. That's my point of interest. And of course, I want to consider all the other factors, but I'm going to design it with this in mind. And then we can go and backfill it and test this with different examples. Okay. I'm not going to uh, go through every variation because there is a lot to be considered. But the first transition, I'm going to call this uh, first, right? The first transition into the types of rules that I'm considering is this um, terminal and non-terminal. So if I consider it in this fashion, if I say, uh, given this, if I have a B and a followed by a BB, then what would I do? Well, the B is going to stay the same because that's in the format that I want it to. But I would uh, make that transition and I would say B and then I'm going to replace it with a different type of non-terminal. So essentially what I want to do is I want to shift. I want to shift over to the right and then keep on doing that with each subsequent letter until what? Until I reach an unmarked non-terminal. So I call it B subscript one as I have right here. That could be any, it could be C, D, E, F, G. I could name it anything, but I'm going to label it as B subscript one so I can keep track of what's going on and, and, and keep an eye on it, right? So this, going back to my problem here, the S is going to go to lambda and I would say A, B, B, right? And I would have B, B, A. So I'll just continue this on the next line. I'm running out of space. So with that transition, I would say A, B, B, and a B, B1, A. Okay. Now, I'm going to want to have the corresponding rules that are going to fit any type of word in my grammar, right? So if I say B with a BB, then I would need an, an A in the same fashion. And I would also need a all the combinations, right? So it would have to be B. And this is going to get a little ugly here, right? In the way that uh, I'm addressing it. So B, A, A, and uh, A, A, A. And then I'm going to have four more. I'm not going to write everything out. OK, just going to do this for brevity, right, to give you an idea about the design. So this would give me a B, and then a B, B sub 1. But here, the B is transferring over, right? And here, the B is transferring its it's it's inverted, it's being switched. And the similar nature with the A, and then I would have 
AB and BA correspondingly. So I'd, I'd have four more, right? Right, four more of those rules. So I switch this over and what I'm going to be interested in now is setting up the appropriate rule where I have a, now I have a different type of non-terminal, right? I have a B1 and it could be an A1 for that matter, depending on the problem, right? Um, so if I say B1, A, how would that transition? That would switch to A, B1, okay. And then the variations for that. So I'm tailoring the key rules for this, but you can see where we're going with this, right? I wanna shift over until I can't shift anymore. And most importantly, the only ones I'm gonna be shifting over are the ones that are marked. And that is what I'm describing as my first transition point, having a non-terminal between a terminal and a non-terminal. So that's my transition point, right? That's completely unique, regardless of my word. I'm going to have the transition from one word to the second word. So again, if I had a A1A, it would be AA1 and, uh, and correspondingly all the variations. If I had, even if uh, the B, I want to be consistent, right? A B, B1 would be a B and a B1, or B1, B would be a B, B1. And of course, the A, 1, B would be a B, A1. Okay, you got it. The key is to shift it over, right? I want to be careful about that. So, so the next thing that I'm going to be following is if I see the B uh, and the A, and that would be matched, that was matched here. And in that transition, So I would have B, A, B1. So it's gone as far as it can go, okay. So I, I have another match here. The non-terminal B and, or terminal B and the non-terminal BA. So that would be one of the variations here. That would be the B, BA, that would be, again, that first transition. What I'm just describing as a second transition is where I have a, after the first, I'm going to be shifting it over of which I would have a marked non-terminal followed to the right by an unmarked non-terminal or non-subscripted non-terminal, right? Just to keep things, um, uh, uh, and check here. So here I have a B and an A, and that would be written as such. Following this rule would be a B, A, B subscript one. So I end up like this, okay. So the fact of using those subscripts and the fact that whether I, the Bs you might think might be a moot point, but it's not a moot point because I gotta follow the process regardless of they're back to back Bs. It kind of looks like it's the same, but it's not because you have to account for everything here. So now I have what would be considered, let's say, a, a third transition, okay, where I have a 
in the third position or the second position from a terminal, I have a subscripted non-terminal, right? So in this case, I have a B. And again, these are not all, this is comprehensive. But when I look at these conditions, I have to consider all the additional um, variations, right? So I have a comprehensive. So essentially the BBA needs to, a B needs to be shifted to the last position. The next B needs to be shifted to, in this case, the second to the last position. And then the A shifted to the third to the last position in this specific example, right? So here I'm going to take the A and I have this rule right here. So I would set this up as, I'm gonna consider, this was the first type of category, right? And if you see one, if you understand how one is done, then you know how all the rest of them are done, the, the other variation. This is being the kind of the category of the second transition. And this, I'm gonna mark it very uniquely. Why? Because the A doesn't have anywhere to go now, right? I'm not going to move them always over to the right. I'm moving them only up to the point of the other ones that have already been moved. So in this case, I'm going to say A2, and I'm going to leave uh, B1 and B1. And you might think, well, I'm done. Okay, I can just transition these two terminals, and I've duplicated my word, but... It doesn't work that way because again, I will be defining a language that makes up some words that don't fit into the language, right? Because if I'm going to transition any B1 to a B or an A1 to a B, I could have done that earlier and, and applied and I could fit in, you know, consider the fact that I have an ABB, BAB, okay? In that case, if I can transition early to a terminal, then I'm going to squeeze in a word that doesn't, it's not a perfect definition. I'm just tailoring it and I have to, I have to make sure I can use this as an inspiration for my design, but I have to consider all the other factors. Again, I'd consider, you know, you have to keep in mind of that. So I make that transition here. And again, I'm gonna have more variations of that. I may have a, a, a terminal B with the AB and I can have a terminal uh, uh, B with a, uh, non-terminal and a uh, terminal subscripted, okay? Um, but here, I mark this as a two, so now I have another unique transition set of categories, in which case I would have a A and then a uh, A2, followed by a subscripted one. For that matter, I could drop the terminal A. Any A or B with a two, I can change the B to a two. So I'll go to A2, B2. And correspondingly, I can say B2, A2, A1 rather. And I can shift these straight across to the right. I could shift that. So essentially this is going to go to A, B, B. A, two, since it's the last one, B1, B1, and then A, B, B. And hopefully as we work through this, you can have a greater understanding. I can go on A2, B2 with the B1. And then finally an A, B, B. A2, B2, B2. Now I can go to the terminals. So that would be the fourth transition or actually the fifth transition, right? But I would say A, B, B, and then these would be con converted to an A with the B2 and a B2. 
and an ABB, an A, uh, and a B, and a B2. And finally, finally, ABB, A, B, B. So there, solve the problem. So you can fill these out a little bit. But the key point here is to have an appreciation of what I'm trying to do. I'm shifting until I reach a new subscripted non-terminal. And when I run out of that, the last one, then I transition to subscripted by a two instead of a one. Then I can follow that through and subscript it. And by anchoring, anchoring the word definition by that terminal, then I'm starting right in the middle. That's the only way I'm going to know that's the middle. And I generate that from my palindrome-esque type of grammar uh, structure that we know and love from the context-free grammar examples. So I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for listening. Take care.